full of strength gather, their conversation always turns to discussing the best training methods, the methods that gave them their greatest returns in muscle development, power, and strength. There's a new breed of strongman emerging today, those who have learned the secrets of improved training by applying science. The great strong men of the past trained hard, ever so hard. They distinguished themselves by their superhuman efforts. They set themselves far above their peers. The strong men of today train hard also, but the best, the ones who make it, train smart. And the inevitable consequence will be that the records of the great strong men of yesterday will be shattered. Before you can understand how to train for great strength and power, you must understand what the sport of powerlifting is all about. Hi, I'm Fred Hatfield. I could give you a list of credits, but this is the only credit that counts. They call him the doctor because of his doctorate degree in kinesiology. He is recognized as the most knowledgeable man in the sport of powerlifting today. He is smooth, great lift, and that's why he is the best in the world, Dr. Squire. Strength is not enough. After all, our sport is not called strength lifting. It is called power lifting. And it is well named, for it is power that enables truly heavy iron to be moved, not mere strength. Power is the ability to call as many of your muscle cells as possible into action at once. A single explosive effort which fires those muscle cells and keeps them firing throughout the entire lift. It is fast, quick, explosive strength which lasts as long as you need it. The more muscle cells you can fire at once, the more weight you can lift. The more explosive force you can use, the more you can overcome the forces of inertia. You must train for this power, both physically and mentally. You must train right for the ability to reach deep within yourself, to move the big weights. You cannot do it any other way. I am not going to teach you how to train long. I am going to teach you how to train smart. There is much to learn, whether you are a powerlifter or a shot putter, football player, any athlete in practically every sport known to man, you will become more capable of training smart. Now, let's learn the secrets to making gains beyond any you've ever experienced. The system we will use is the 5-10-5 method. Like any modern training program, you will train according to a cycle. You will use five stages of preparation. This cycle will take you from the beginning of your training all the way up to your final peaking, either for a contest or a whole competition season if you are involved in seasonal power sports. You will use ten movements or exercises. These exercises will be the basic ones you will use to build muscle. You will be working with a bar, and with dumbbells. And while you are working through your training cycle, you will use five stepping stones, mental techniques, and nutritional secrets to give you the extra edge. With the five stepping stones, you create the weapons you need, mentally and physically, to win. Whether you are starting out or beginning your cycle again after competition or a layoff, you must return to basics. First, this is the only way a beginner can hope to become great, to withstand the heavy stress of maximum effort under heavy iron. You must build a solid foundation. Would you try to jack up a car in sand? Would you try to shoot a cannon out of a canoe? You must have a base. You must be strong through your entire body, or you will not last through a maximum effort peaking cycle without injury. Stage one is a period where you should concentrate on weaknesses. Is your technique poor because of a weak back? Do you have nagging injuries because of poor flexibility? Do you have a poor bench press because of weak shoulders? 
This is the stage when you should eliminate your weaknesses. Don't think about trying to lift the most weight. Think only about using the right technique. You are not only building your muscles, you are training your muscle memory. Teach your muscles to do things right from the beginning. Monitor yourself to see that you are using correct technique. Go to a lighter weight if necessary. Good form provides better overload for maximum strength development. Equalize opposing muscle groups. When you do a bench press, for example, you must also do bent rows for your upper back. When you work on your quads, you must also work on your hamstrings. And you must stretch to keep yourself flexible. Don't neglect this, because lack of flexibility will create an opening for injury and poor form under heavy iron. Here is a basic beginning cycle workout. You will use this workout up until 8 or 10 weeks before the contest or season. beginning you must keep a training diary it must tell the movement the poundage the degree of difficulty you feel with each set and the time it took for your workout from warm-up to cool down also during this foundational period remember to have fun playing sports like racquetball and basketball agility and coordination are essential to peak performance and sports can give you these qualities stage two your body is now ready to accept some major stress. You will now begin to increase your absolute strength levels. This is the stage where the old timers ended their training. Today, we know how to go light years beyond. Your stages will overlap. Only you know your body well enough to decide the speed at which to phase in the next stage. Now we go to the 10 movements. The 10 movements are similar to several of those used in your first workout, but now you begin building upon that foundation, concentrating more upon strength in each movement. As the weights get heavier, you must begin doing specific movements on different days. You must also allow your body sufficient rest time. Here is the correct technique for each movement. Okay, Bruce, back out of the rack slowly. Keep your body very upright and go straight down and straight back up. Don't hit the bottom position. Come near it. Stand up. Very good. Do it again. Okay. Okay, lower the weight to your lower chest, elbows out. Push the weight off your chest in a C movement, in a big curve. Good, do it again. Again. All right. Okay, stand up. Now go down with a flat back and only slightly bent knees. Very good. Very good, come up. Okay, do it again. Get your head out of the way, Richard. Pull the bar to your chin. Keep your forearm up and down. Now, down. Okay. Straight up and down. Okay. Good. Good. Go. Straight arms. You know what I mean by straight arms? Yeah. My arms straight. Yeah. My arms straight? No. That's what I mean by straight arms. Put your bicep against your ear. All right, now bend to the side. And stand straight back up. Straight to the side. And back up. Good. Straight to the side, Benny. And back up. Good. 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 
One of them at a time, straight up. Drive it harder. Good. Good. Bend to the side, straight up. Bend and up. And bend and up. Good. Put your elbows against your side. Now push down. Good. Keep them going. Straight down. Elbows straight. Good. Push. Okay. Lift, don't swing. Lift, don't swing and hold. And good. Again. Lift, hold, and up. You will use these exercises until about three weeks before the contest or season. About 12 weeks out from the contest, you'll begin overlapping stage three. Now you should begin getting into a frame of mind where power, not strength, is paramount. This refocusing of your training energy calls for a highly specialized form of training. I call it compensatory acceleration training. Now hear me, and hear me well. Compensatory acceleration training is your single most important tool for becoming truly powerful. It is the only method of training that can yield explosive power improvements and at the same time improve your absolute strength levels to your maximum potential. This form of training can make a difference of up to 20% on each lift. In order to explain what I mean by compensatory acceleration training, let's take a look at the squat. In the bottom position, your leverage is very poor because of angles of your hips, knees, and ankles. However, as you come up out of the bottom position, your leverage begins to improve the closer you get to lockout. In order to compensate for this improved leverage, you've got to apply acceleration to the bar. This is the only way to get truly maximum overload throughout the entire range of movement. Otherwise, overload is restricted to the bottom portion of the movement only. To put it another way, you must be faster and faster throughout the entire movement until lockout. You'll be doing the same exercises you did during stage two. However, the movements where you will apply compensatory acceleration training are the squat, bench press, and deadlift. These are the exercises which most resemble the actual lifting techniques you'll use in competition. During this period of your cycle, you will be making maximum strength gains, but you must remember to lower the reps on the compensatory acceleration movements. Neither your body nor your nervous system can handle the same number of reps as you use with ordinary exercises without suffering from overtraining. Overtraining will delay your cycle. Here is your workout for stage three. Right. Now you're ready for stage four. You are through worrying about strength improvement. Now is the time to get powerful, power, strength with speed. If you are training for a powerlifting competition, you now begin to introduce actual competition techniques into your training. Drop the wide grip bench presses in favor of the more efficient contest technique. Drop stiff-legged deadlifts in favor of conventional or sumo technique. Do away with high bar squats or safety squats in favor of your competitive stance. It should combine all of the muscle groups needed to move the heaviest weight possible. If you are training for other sports, start getting away from isolation movements. Start incorporating exercises specific to your sport, increasing the speed of your sets. Think about what you need in competition. Strong quads? Strong trunk? Strong shoulders? The 10 movements have given you a much greater level of absolute strength. Maintain that strength by continuing the 10 movements. But remember, 
They are secondary to working on your competition techniques. If you are training for a powerlifting meet, remember, stop all of the 10 movements two or three weeks before the contest date. And now, the final honing of your body for competition, stage five. Soviet athletes are famous for their strength and power. Their Olympic weightlifters and track and field athletes dominate international competition. Their secret is an important system of training they have developed to increase explosive power. It is only used for a brief period, about six weeks, in a peaking cycle timed to match the period when you want to be at your maximum in every way. Plyometrics, as the system is called, is a group of exercises consisting of leaping, bounding, and shock training. It is designed to cause rapid changes in how your nervous system responds to stress. It allows you to make more muscle cells fire instantaneously than you ever could before. And remember, the more muscle cells that get going, the more explosive force you have. This is your workout for stage five. stages, the ten movements, and now the final piece to make you complete, the five stepping stones. First, follow a nutritional program capable of sustaining maximum stress on joints, muscles, and connective tissue. This includes lean proteins such as organ meats, chicken and fish, fresh natural oils, not the hydrogenated ones that become solid at room temperature. If they are solid now, they won't melt inside your body. You already know to stay away from sugars. Honey, corn syrup, and fructose are all sugars. Use your training diary to record what you eat and how strong you feel the next day. You will soon notice certain foods don't work for you. You have to notice it because this is a different thing for each individual. Ergogenic aids are state-of-the-art work enhancers. Innocent, for example, helps improve muscular energy, enabling you to do more reps. Carnitine helps mobilize fat for sustained energy. And di- or trimethylglycine assists in the cell's utilization of oxygen. Certain amino acids help improve energy, muscular growth, and a number of other important biochemical functions. You use weights to make your muscles grow. You use these nutrients to make that growth efficient. Improving your power output takes a lot from your body, an awful lot. And the limitation has always been that your body can only take so much of that abusive stress. This is perhaps the most important stepping stone to greatness, teaching your body to recuperate faster and avoiding overtraining. Overtraining is when you put your body under more workout stress before it has recovered completely from the last workout. I will now show you how to restore your body more quickly so you can train harder and more often. Hydrotherapy, simple hot water, either in a hot tub or bath, brings the blood to the skin surface and helps flush out lactic acid produced by overworked muscles. Take a hot shower or whirlpool for six minutes after your cool down. Hot water will help your muscles rebuild faster after the hard workout. Deep muscle massage, not a gentle rub, but deep, almost painful cross-fiber massage of the muscles used in training, helps clear them of lactic acid and other wastes. 
Anything that promotes increased blood flow, heat and pressure both do this, will bring more oxygen to the muscles and help flush out toxins faster. If you have not recuperated between workouts, if you are overtrained, you will lose muscle instead of building it. It can be a gradual thing. It may take some time for you to notice you aren't making gains. That is time lost from your cycle, enough perhaps to keep you from being a winner. Be constantly aware of the signs of overtraining. First, an elevated pulse in the morning. To find your pulse each morning, put your hand on the side of your windpipe where your neck and head meet. Count the beats for 10 seconds, timed with a stopwatch. Multiply this time six. Keep a daily record of your morning pulse in your training diary, but only after your first two weeks of steady training. On any morning where your pulse is elevated by more than four beats after you calculate it, then watch for other signs of overtraining. These include loss of appetite, problems in falling asleep or staying asleep, fatigue, and loss of desire to train. If recuperation techniques and the other stepping stones don't eliminate the problem, take off for a day. Better to lose one day than a week of your cycle because of overtraining. How do you handle negatives? Do you excuse a poor workout because of poor equipment or bad spotters or lack of a coach? Why are you letting negatives serve as excuses? You won't have it perfect on competition day either. Look at it this way. The absence of a coach won't stop you. The lousy equipment won't stop you. Nothing, nothing is going to stop you. Use that determination to do a better workout. They won't get in your way. Nothing will. And from the beginning, from the moment you start your cycle, you must begin using visualization. Do this for about 15 minutes every day. Do it before sleep when you are in your most receptive state. Go over the lifts that you've worked on that day. Actually feel your muscles responding to the thought process. Visualize improvements in your technique. Visualize more weight in each lift. It's important to visualize the entire movement, to see it as a continuous motion, not as a series of still photographs and not as only a part. If you find that you have problems seeing the whole movement, you are probably weak in that part of the exercise, lacking in technique. Practice seeing it as a movie in your head. Replay it over and over again correctly until you can actually see the whole movement done right, done by you, done successfully as you want to do it. The mind controls the body. It controls your muscles and your glands. This simple technique, visualization, can actually help you recuperate faster and restore your body in less time. Constantly monitor yourself and your progress. Don't trust entries in your training diary to memory. Efficiency in your training diary will carry over to your workouts. Be aware of your readiness for competition. For powerlifting, make sure your contest equipment and clothing is in order. Make sure your U.S. Powerlifting Federation membership is up to date. If you need a competition license for your sport, make sure your dues are paid and you are valid. Schedule your travel so that you have plenty of time to recover from jet lag or to get used to altitude changes. A true champion is always prepared. A true champion is always ready. And now, for competition or workout, it's time to lift heavy iron. You've been there before. You let your mind flow to within itself, where trickles of primordial instinct well up to become torrents of unleashed fury. You go to the other place, where there is no pain, no negative influences, no fear, a state of mind where only positive forces dwell. The iron is lifted. The sport of powerlifting is the greatest sport in the world. People find themselves caring for things in their lives that have the capability of inflicting great pain. Powerlifting can do that. It's a sport where danger is ever present. Injury to your body, though, is only fleeting. 
That's not real pain. Real pain comes from failure. Failure to achieve, failure to realize your potential. Yet by definition, sports such as powerlifting can have only one winner. Most of us lose more than we win. The cost of trying is often pain, but the rewards of trying are greater by far. You'll know the true value of powerlifting when people stop and stare. You, my friend, are one of the strongest of the strong. You are revered above all men. People have always admired great strength. Throughout history, it has been that way, and it still is. And it always will be. I'll be back.